Hey everyone, Whew. technology. Hey, we're here today. How are you guys? I'm Sarah Walworth. Hey, I'm Alyssa. Welcome, and welcome. We're super happy to be here live with you today. Um, go ahead and throw your, throw something into the comments so that we can test our feed for the chat. And we want to see if you guys can see us and hear us before we get started and jump into our question and answers. So tell us who you are and where you're um, watching from. Um, and there's Azariah's Fiber Arts. Hello. Thank you welcome. for doing that. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you see me, keep looking to that would be your your left right mm -hmm. your left crush i don't know sometimes they flip things on screens i'm watching the comments on facebook so we can keep track of everyone's questions that's christine okay new, new mexico, mexico. Yay! Nice. so you all are getting a heat wave down there aren't you Liz. hey liz here from kansas so um yeah tell us if you're just joining us throw your um, location of where you're watching from into the chat. Um, my name is Sarah Walworth. I am the owner of the Tech Editor Hub, and I'm super excited to be here with you today. Um, I uh, can't wait to get into some answers um, for all your questions that you've been sending us. Yes, and I'm Melissa. I am the instructor at Learn to Tech Edit Crochet. Cannot wait to hear all of your questions. So if you do have a question for us, um, feel free to just go ahead and throw it straight into the chat and we will answer it. Um, you don't have to wait. Um, we're gonna, let's see, we're here today to answer questions about learn to tech edit crochet and but also about tech editing in general. So um, let me pull up a couple things that I wanted to throw across the bottom here. So Learn to Tech Edit Crochet is open now for signups. And I'm going to put into the chat the link for the page if you're interested in finding out more about the course that we're going to be talking about. And we're only open for signups for about another 24 hours. And then we're going to close enrollment until, I don't know, Melissa, fall? Fall. Yeah. yeah. And school probably starts fall. up again, probably. Yeah. So um, if you are interested at all in this course, that's where all the information is, is on this page, which I'm going to put on Facebook right now. And where, let's see if I can put it onto the YouTube from here. I think I can. And there we go. So that's there if you need it. Um, but let's go ahead and address some of these questions. We've got a lot of questions over the last couple of weeks. Melissa, what yes. would you like to start with? Let's start with, let's start with the basics. Do I have to know how to crochet in order to be a crochet tech editor? Yeah. And so the question I had was how important is it to have good knowledge and experience of crochet in order to tech edit crochet patterns? Yeah. So I would definitely say you need to know how to crochet and you need to know how to read a crochet pattern. There are a lot of crocheters out there that just uh, wing it. You know, they pick up a hook and some yarn and they make something that's awesome. But in order to tech edit patterns, you're going to need to know how to actually read and follow a pattern first and how to make, I would say, beginner, um, excuse me, you'll need to know everything that's like the easy to beginner to intermediate level of crochet, depending on what type of patterns you take on. If it's just really simple patterns, you could probably get away with just being a, um, beginner crocheter having the basics down but to really go far you'll want to have an intermediate or higher knowledge of crochet and so do you agree yeah i do and what i wanted to tell you is there's a little bit beyond this you may feel like oh i don't have enough 
I don't have enough experience or I don't have enough um, background knowledge. Part of learning how to be a good tech editor is you're always learning. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, there, yes. The, I mean, are you are you always learning new things? There are times when I will set the pattern aside and turn the stopwatch off to keep track of my time and I'll pick up a hook. And I will try a stitch pattern out just to see if it works out same on my hook as it does in written form in the pattern. And it's great. I get to learn a new stitch. Right. And yeah. Yeah. So no, definitely you're always learning. And the more advanced patterns you end up with, then the more you learn. Exactly. And here's how it was for me when I first started. I'm a knitting tech editor, so I'm not a crochet tech editor. But I think the same information is applicable. I started editing. I wanted to be an editor. So I took the Learn to Tech Edit course. And then I started offering services for just what I really felt comfortable in, like what I knew really well and what my where my experience level was. And then as I gained more clients and I gained more experience, so then I would get, let's say I would get a, a more difficult pattern in my inbox. I would take the time, maybe even a whole day, and just do the research on it and figure out, okay, what do I need to know to make this edit fantastic? And it's made me a big, a bigger, better editor, I guess is the best way to put it. So don't limit yourself. If you are just at the level you're at with crochet, you can still jump in. You can still become a tech editor because as editors, we are always learning. We're always expanding. We're always improving. This was what makes us a master at what we do is we're never satisfied with just where we're at. We always want to know more. Do you agree, Melissa? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There was a time where I would not, I'm a knitting and a crochet editor. And there was a time where I wouldn't edit certain types of knitting patterns just because I did not feel comfortable. But I've played with the stitches and the techniques a little bit. And now I don't advertise it, but I've had a couple patterns come across my desk where I haven't turned them away. Right. So it's yeah. been great. I don't yeah. turn away. I don't turn away patterns because it's I can learn it. Um, if Even if I don't know it yet, uh, it's. The craft is not that complex and I can learn it yeah. within the time period that I need. And here's the other thing. When when you join the Tech Editor Hub and you join the Learn to Tech Edit course, you get connected to a community. So none of us, Melissa, do you work by yourself at home maybe, right? Well, I wish I worked by myself at home. <laughs> Usually I have a little dog on my lap or trying to get up on my lap and kids running through my house saying what's for lunch mm -hmm. what's for dinner yeah yeah no but, I'm saying, but i don't i don't like, work yeah i have a lot of colleagues and they are so valuable especially when i run into a situation maybe where i haven't seen something before or i just want to um get somebody else's ears and eyes to just double check me to make sure that I'm not missing something or yeah, this really is not worded clearly, that kind of thing. So yeah, we have um, private groups on Facebook where you can ask questions in confidence, which is fantastic. And this is, this is the key to being a really good tech editor is you are not your own island. You are not doing this alone. Um, our whole goal at the Tech Editor Hub is to hook you up with your colleagues. We like to foster a, an atmosphere of community and not competition. We as tech editors are not competing against each other to get clients. We're actually helping each other. So if there's something I don't know, then I put out a bat signal. I don't know how to do this. Can you guys help me? Um, can you show me what references you've used to solve this? Or have you ever seen this before, like Melissa said? And this is the beauty is you are not signing up to be this lone ranger. You are actually becoming a part of us and we're working together to make our industry um, a better place for the, for the makers. One of my favorite things about these groups is that all my colleagues and myself, if we have too much work to do or we have a job that doesn't fit our business model, then it gets passed along. Like, like Sarah said, there really is not the competitiveness in these groups. It's more of a, I help you, you help me, 
you know, I think I have a saying, the rising tide lifts all boats. 100%. Yeah. That is absolutely (laughs) how I feel about this. I think we answered that question, but Mm -hmm. if you guys, if this brought, hey, wait a minute. You said this, that doesn't make sense. Please toss it into the chat, wherever you're watching from, and please ask us questions. Uh, we, we are here to live. It's really the whole point of why we're doing this is we mm-hmm. wanted to connect yeah. with you guys here in this format. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is about the Learn to Tech Edit crochet course that's open now for enrollment um, until tomorrow. It's open, the seats are open. Um, you, we decided, uh, let's see, in February when we opened for our beta round, we did have a community for the students and that was one of the things melissa's like yep we needed a community so we had a bigger community but we didn't have a specialized one just for people that enjoy crochet just for the students of this class now there's a private Mm -hmm. facebook group where it's all the editors so that you can go in there and you can pick other students brains and other editors brains and as you grow your business we're really hoping that this becomes something um, that becomes a support to you and your expanding and growing business. So hopefully that answered everybody's question. But what should we go to next? What question do you think will work? Um, how about if there's room for growth? If mm-hmm. there's new editor, if new editors will actually be able to find clients and find work, or is the market oversaturated? I would say no, not for crochet. Definitely not for crochet. No, there is room for growth, right? It's not yeah. saturated, right? Yeah. The crochet market is wide open and crochet is having a moment right now. So there are plenty, plenty of room for more skilled editors. In fact, I just saw a um, an ad yesterday looking for crochet tech editors for one of the third party publishers. So definitely. Definitely room for room for more of you. In fact, I'd love it if there was if more of you would join me because then I can pass some of these jobs on to you all. Well, so here's the I thing is a question. Yeah, there is always room because our, yes. our industry is always changing. Mm-hmm. So like if six years ago crochet wasn't that hot of a thing. And now crochet is big. It's big across the world, not just in the crafting and yarn industries, but in other areas and fashion, Mm -hmm. it's huge. Crochet, so there's these expansions and contractions and changes and everybody's business changes too. So while um, someone may jump in and become a tech editor, they might work for six or seven years and they're like, "Ah, okay, I'm done. And then they retire. I cannot tell you how many inquiries I get from people saying, my tech editor retired. I need help. I need a good editor. I need someone. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. And I've I've been in the industry for too many years to actually want to mention. And I've seen the same thing where it designers or editors or anybody in this field, they'll take time off or they'll go move on to other things. New designers, new editors pop up. So it's definitely a constant, you know, flow of coming and going. The other aspect of this is the industry needs you. So your particular skill set, your particular life experiences, your particular experiences career wise or education wise before you came to tech editing are unique. So who Melissa is as an editor is not the same as who I am as an editor. And it's not going to be the same as who you are as an editor. And honestly, this is what this is the the thing that's behind the scenes here is that we actually need everyone. (laughs) If you feel like you have something to offer to the industry as far as editing and making crochet patterns the best, polishing them up, being the visible hand behind the scene that makes things better for makers and being a support to designers to help them, then we need you. Uh, there's yes. there's always going to be growth because everybody is so unique in what they bring. So Sarah, did you see we have a question from Sharon? 
Yeah, I saw that. Go okay. ahead. How many people went through the beta phase? We, I can't remember off the top of my head. We had 24. 24. Yeah. Okay, 24. I knew it was in the in the dozens at least. Yeah. We had 24 people join in February and help us with our brand new course made by Melissa. Um, and the really cool part about it is they helped us to make some changes and actually improve mm -hmm. it. So the course that's being offered now is a, an improved version. Um, yes. So they were very, very helpful in honing a lot of the, a lot of the individual things Mm -hmm. that they needed more information on, such as I believe one of them was skill levels, right? Because we talked about it briefly, but um, now we've expanded that section, for instance, right? To discuss more specifically what skill levels are what in crochet. So I wanted to run into maybe a, a similar thing is can someone actually make this a career? And we're talking about tech editing. Can editing crochet patterns actually become a career? What do you think, Melissa? Where are you at with this? So I'm part time. Mm -hmm. I do not take on every job that comes across my desk because I have two kids and I teach them at home. So that's a full time job in and of itself. And then all the other things that go along with being a mom, like being the chauffeur and all of that. So this is part-time for me. You could definitely, definitely work a 40 hour job, 40 hour week job with this, like have a career. I will say the only caveat is, is that there are a lot of people that work very hard in this field that uh, do well for themselves, but you have to do the work to get to a full-time career. It's gonna be, finding a lot of clients and doing a lot of editing. But that's the beauty of having your own business is that you make the roles, you decide how you want your hours, where you want your hours to be worked, uh, what type of patterns you wanna edit, um, all of that stuff. When you wanna take a vacation, you just let your clients know. So it's definitely doable. It's going to be work and I don't I don't want to mislead anyone it's going to be work you, like every other business starting it up for the first time you will have to put um, a lot of effort and a lot of sweat and you know brain yeah. power into this to get it going the way you want it to go yeah and that's the beauty of it is you get to decide mm-hmm so when you first start tech editing, you're going to go in one direction. Maybe you're building up a small business. Um, maybe you're working part time as you working another job until you build up that business enough to take over your full time work. Um, if that's the direction that you want to go, uh, like Melissa's doing it part time while she's home educating her children. Um, that's where I started. Also, <laughs> we're both homeschool moms. So sorry <laughs> for <Warren. laughs> Um but there, and I, we've had people who jump into tech editing who are doing as a retirement position. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing is, is you get to decide. This is mm -hmm. not something that's in a box where there's only one avenue. You get to decide what your business looks like, what kind of services you offer, how you want to diversify your services. Um, and once you have some experience, you can start applying for jobs at publishers, at magazines. Mm -hmm at yarn companies and a lot of them have full-time positions, editorial positions um, that are absolutely 100% a career. So there's no limits. Um, yes. Yes, someone actually can make this a career. This is my career. <laughs> yes, so, this is yeah. my part-time, my part-time mm -hmm. career, but I call it seasons of life. You know, my season yep. of life will change and then I will pick up more clients and make this more full time. But the other thing is that you have to um, look at is this job offers location flexibility, not only time flexibility, but location flexibility. So a lot of times I don't have an office where I work from. Sarah does. She's got a beautiful oh. office right there behind her. I do not have a beautiful office behind me, but I have instead 
is an iPad and all of the bits that go with it. And I grab my iPad and I take it with me to wherever I need to be so that I can take care of my number one priority right now, which is my kids. Yeah. So it'll go with me to the pool, to ice skating lessons, to karate class, you know, wherever it has to go. So one and of the other perks of being your own boss. <laughs> this is why a lot of us start tech editing is we want the flexibility. We want to be able to take our making skills and we want to translate it into something that can earn money. And this is why we get started in tech editing is like, oh, wow, I know how to do this really well. I understand patterns. I can tell when a pattern's off. I can see that there's something wrong in this pattern and I can figure mm -hmm. out the numbers and how it's all working. Wow. Someone will pay me to do this. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it, it's mind boggling. Yes. <laughs> this is a job. And it's not only that, but it's an incredibly important job. Um, in our industry, uh, there are hundreds of thousands of patterns that come that are in play, that are in the market that people are shopping for. How do, how does a designer make their pattern? and their brand stand out. It's usually by reputation. Mm -hmm. So as a tech editor, when a designer hires you, they're hiring you to help build their brand and their reputation by making sure that their patterns are the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. Clear, they're concise, they're not confusing, they're accurate. And so that their makers are like, oh, I love this designer. I want to make more of them. And then the designer gets better business because they'll get repeat customers. Every time they release a pattern, their makers already know, oh, this, this designer has it together. Their patterns are excellent. Um, and yes. that's what you're doing. As a tech editor, this kind of career is so incredibly satisfying. It, it's, it's like, God, how can you explain it, Melissa? It's like, yes, because you're, well, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say my brain likes to work kind of like a, um, a puzzle. Like if I see mm -hmm. puzzles, I love it. So I, as a kid, I was that kid that would get all of the friends and all the siblings and we would sit down at our little cardboard boxes in summer and I would hand out worksheets and then I would grade them when they, when they turned them back in. And I thought that was fun. But um, when I look at a pattern, I see a puzzle. Okay, where can we make this better? What's the error? How do we fix it? Uh, where is things missing? Like, you know, those little puzzles where something is different. Okay, where is the period missing at the end of a sentence? Or is everything formatted the same? And so it's like, it's fun to me. I like the challenge of making patterns beautiful before they go out into the world. So when so. you have a good edit, like when you, Melissa, I have a question for you. When you yeah. complete an edit and you're like, oh, how does that feel for you? It's like, yes, for me. I mean, my family will hear me out there. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I celebrate. <laughs> I celebrate, especially if it's a challenging edit. I'm like, all right. We are celebrating this one, even if I just cheer in my own little chair, you know, mm -hmm. or in my in my car in yep. the front seat. People probably think that, um, yeah, there's something wrong with me cheering in my car on <laughs> the streets downtown. <laughs> but no, yeah, no, it's a great feeling. And then it's a really great feeling when I see those patterns published. And I feel so proud of my designers. And a lot of times I'll have to, even if they don't tag me, I have to share them anyway, because I'm so proud of the beautiful work that they've done. And so that's the biggest part about tech editing is it's, it's a job where you're collaborating with a designer. So you become their super fan. You are like on their side. You're like, I want you to succeed so bad. And so then, mm -hmm all these problem solving, these little problem solving things that happen during the editing process. And then you get to the end and you're like, yes. And it's such a satisfying job to make it through an entire edit and then watch that designer release the pattern and see all of the accolades that they get. And yes, and for them to just be so relieved and confident, I can release this pattern without worrying about it because I've had it tech edited 
And it's just great to be on a team with a designer. It's mm -hmm. such a fulfilling job. I didn't realize how fulfilling tech editing was, even like yes. psychologically fulfilling. Um, and so it's not just checking errors and doing it on your computer and, then, and doing the spreadsheet work. There's, mm -hmm. there's a result when you get through this process with a designer where you're just like so fulfilled and like, yes, and then move on to the next project and just solve the next problem. Yes, I have I have one designer in particular that designs for um, ready to wear as well as patterns. And she has stuff on runways during fashion week. And when I see her stuff pop up, I'll grab all my friends and be like, look, I edited that. I've seen this pattern behind the scenes. Look what I did. Look what she did. Isn't this awesome? And it's gorgeous stuff, like bridal gown type stuff. It's beautiful. So but, this, yeah. is, this is the cool part about being in a, on a team with a designer is that mm -hmm. you, you're not out in front. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe we're, we're us tech editors are a little bit introverted. We don't want to be on the front stage. We don't want to be out no. in public with this. We're doing... Yeah things behind the scenes that provide mm -hmm. support to designers and to publishers and magazines mm -hmm. that and but we we still get all of the the kudos for it psychologically we still get yes. extremely um it's almost like a relief it's like yeah <laughs> so we have a question from liz uh should a tech editor also be a tester or is chris shane just a swatch Crocheting a swatch, can't say that five times fast, just something you do to get an idea of what is being made. Because you mentioned this, Melissa, yes. thing. Yeah, and you don't have to crochet a swatch. A lot of times I do not crochet a swatch. It's just for those um, newer stitch patterns that I have never come across or I've only come across in um, very rare specific instances. That's the time where I'll pull out a hook and some waste yarn and I'll tell, or if there's something that I'm just not a hundred percent sure about, I'll put everything aside, grab some, um, some waste yarn and a hook and just double check that I'm not, you know, mistaken and I'm marking something as an error when it's not, but, but no, I don't actually test for any of my clients. I would not have the time to test for any of my clients. But that said, I do have a lot of clients that will come to me and say, hey, what do you think about this? I have a tester that's come back and reported to me that it doesn't fit here or the neckline or this or that. And what do you think? And um, I'm able to give feedback based upon what I see in the pattern to help the designer work with the designer's testers. So we all kind of work together. Right. But I do not do the testing. No. Right. And I don't think you should expect yourself to have to test everything. No. no. In fact, I don't have time. So if I'm editing um, on a regular week when I was doing it almost full time, I was doing probably six to seven patterns a week. I don't have time to work seven patterns in a week. There's no way. Most of it th is done in our head. Um, we're doing it looking at the page, we're looking at it, looking at our spreadsheet to check the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I draw little diagrams to get myself oriented, especially when I can't figure out what part's connecting to what. Um, do you draw diagrams? <laughs> I don't draw diagram. Well, I'll, I'll make charts mm -hmm. just on paper if I need to. But I will say one time I had a bridal gown that I was editing and it had a gorgeous drape in the back of it. So I had a picture of just the drape. So my little printer printed off just that picture like this big. And I went through with a pen and started counting right. stitches and yep. looking at the pattern, counting stitches, just making sure everything was I exactly that. right. But no, I wish I had time to test everything that comes across. There's Ditto. so many cute things. I have the cutest little toys that come across my desk. I'm like, man, I need some little kids that I can make these things for and give them away. I, I, I totally adorable. agree. And here's the thing is that as somebody had asked us in another, there was another question that we got, like, how do you find clients? How do you get started? Now, if yeah. you are already testing for a designer, 
-hmm. this can be an entryway into tech editing. Yes. Because uh, this is actually how I got landed my first tech editing job is I was testing for a designer. It was mm -hmm. just a simple hat. And when I completed the test while also filling out all the information that the designer needed as a requirement for doing the test, I also gave her some other things that I noticed. <laughs> and I said, hey, I'm taking clients as a tech editor. And she ended up becoming um, a longtime client, um, my first, and it was for a, a couple of years that we worked together. So testing it has its place in our industry. It's super important. Oh, um, yes. It can be a way for you to enter the tech editing field and kind of to get a feel for how the whole designing process works. But we don't have time to knit or crochet every pattern that comes across our desk. We just don't. <laughs> no, I wish I did. No, as a designer, I have done that, Sarah. I have told my testers, hey, you need to look into tech editing because you have a really good eye for detail. And usually they'll say, what's tech editing? Like, yes. Oh, well. Let me introduce you. <laughs> so, the, yeah. So, so, do you recommend tech editing before or after testing? And we probably should define what testing and tech editing are. I mean, this could be a whole separate yeah. conversation, but um, yeah, testers are my people who come and volunteer in a, an online forum. In my case, and I give them my pattern, and they test it, and they tell me how it fits, and they tell me if they find any errors, and they tell me if um, anything is worded where a little bit more confusing or it could be clear more clearly worded so that's what my testers do and if i were tech editing for her what i would do yeah. is i would like take her pattern go through space by space line by line number by number word by word abbreviation by abbreviation and make sure that it actually all will make the thing <laughs> Designed and that all the numbers work together, that it's consistent and it's accurate. And that if a crocheter picks up this pattern, they would be able to follow the instructions in a way that actually works. And that is all done up here. So which, is, which should come first? As tech editors, we say you need to tech edit first so that your testers get a good pattern to work from. Um, so I would say it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends. I have really patient testers and they have fun finding all of the errors in my pattern. And we will sometimes joke, okay, let's see if the tech editor finds this one too. We'll see how many she finds versus you all. But um, if you have patient testers that you've worked with for a while, I don't see any problem with sending them the pattern where it's unedited, especially if you've had a lot of experience writing patterns and your patterns usually come back from the tech editor with minimal errors in them. But if your testers are the kind that would get irritated at having a pattern with errors in it, send it to the tech editor first. Right. Uh, some of my clients will send me the pattern and then they'll send it to their testers and then they send it back to me for a final mm -hmm. edit if they've had to update anything or make changes to anything. But like I said, if you're going to send it to testers before it's been tech edited, just make sure they know it's still in the process of tech editing, you know, so be warned. This is a I great, hope that answers the question. Yeah, this is a great comment. I've been testing a lot and often make tech editing suggestions. I may already be halfway to tech editing. Yes, yeah. Sharon, yeah. you are. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So imagine if you were doing the, not actually doing it on the hook, um, then you would be, if you were able to do it in your head, like reading through the pattern and thinking in your, like how you would do it with your hands, that's mm -hmm. all that tech editing is. And then you are looking, you're doing a find search kind of where's mm -hmm. Waldo for all the errors mm -hmm. and the things that might throw the maker off, like, that didn't make sense or that's confusing or yeah. this could be worded differently so that it's not confusing um or they didn't or, tell me to turn at the end of the row do i just keep going in a circle yes yeah. or they didn't they used a weird abbreviation what does this mean or they didn't explain the abbreviations so these are all things that a tech editor does so think you've already tested like this think about 
what it would take for you to go the distance and to actually, you could earn money doing this very easily. Um, oh, yes. there, especially because you've already had that experience testing. So you've already been in that sphere of being on the other side of the pattern where you're working mm -hmm. a pattern that's not quite complete, not quite all the way done. And you already are familiar with how that looks and feels. And that gives you a great brain space to be able to step into the shoes of editing, which happens up here and on paper. <laughs> Yeah, so I was a tester before I was an editor, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, a lot of us were. It's a great way to begin to work in the technical design process, to work in that process before a pattern gets published, before it gets released for, for people to buy. So let, we have just a few more questions. Um, we don't want to take too much of your time today. Um, just so you know, right now, we're here live. Um, answering questions about tech editing because currently our Learn to Tech Edit Crochet course, which is LTTE is the abbreviation for it, in there, is open for signups. And we're only open for about 24 more hours. Um, and then we're gonna close until fall. And we're, we'd be super excited to have you on board. If you are interested, um, now is the time to sign up and I'll throw the, the link to um, the link to where you can go find out more information about the course, I'll throw it into the comments, into the chat. Um, we have some questions. We got a lot of questions about how this course operates. So maybe Melissa, you can explain like how, what happens when they sign up for the course? What do they get? Okay, so when you sign up for the course, you will be getting access to pre-recorded lessons that are hosted on a site. You don't have to click off the site. You go straight to the site, you log in, and you'll receive your first couple of modules for the course. We waited, we wait and we um, give you a new module or a couple of modules every week, just so that everybody is going through the material at the same pace. And you get the module, you open it, and there'll be a video lesson in there. Sometimes, usually about the middle of the course, you'll start having homework where you'll actually tech edit a real life pattern that you can go and buy now if you wanted to, but you'll be getting to tech edit a real life pattern piece by piece, section by section as we go through the course. And there will be homework, answer keys for that as well. And then on Fridays of every week, any questions that we get, I will answer them and provide those answers to you. And as you go through the course every week, you'll be adding new modules that are available to you and new homework answer keys and new homework assignments. And after you get the whole course done, which is only seven weeks, seven weeks, yeah, right? Seven weeks. Okay, mm -hmm. seven weeks then you'll have completely tech edited a whole real pattern, real crochet pattern. Yep. And you'll have bonus homework where the designer has sent you back the, the next version of the same pattern and you'll go through and you'll edit that. You'll have learned how to make decisions to set up your business the way you want it to for your lifestyle and know what kind of a t uh, technology, um, hardware, things like that, that you'll want to choose based upon your business decisions for how you want your business to look. And then we go through how to look for and find clients for yourself also based upon how you want your business to look. Because somebody who say only wants to tech edit crochet wedding dresses is going to have a whole different business type of model than somebody who wants to only tech edit home decor. You know, or they'll have toys. different markets or, or toys. toys. Yeah. Or like yeah. That. The yeah. markets will be different. Sometimes the places you'll look for clients will be different, but we talk about things like that. And oh. then you will have all the skills you need to go and get started looking for clients and taking on tech editing jobs. You'll also get access to our free private Facebook group where mm -hmm. you can network with other crochet tech, ed crochet tech editors. Sorry, I can't talk. 
And, and then um, we've got a, a, a we we miss. new, right? Oh, yes, we do. A uh, live, live Zoom session um, mm -hmm. towards the, the end question. of the course. Mm -hmm. Yes, towards the end of the course, where I can answer all of your questions about crochet tech editing, finding clients, which software is right for you, and things like that um, in a live session. Yeah. So, so did that's, I miss anything? that's new for this round, too. Yes. So yes. questions that we've gotten um, over and over again. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't start on June twentieth. So the course mm -hmm. will begin on June twentieth, which is Monday. I can't. I have to start late. Can I still sign up and work at my own pace? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so yes. the, the the modules will come to you on a weekly basis, so you can work on them at your own pace yes. when you're ready. Um, we have students who were in the beta round on February who didn't get to finish and they're like, I just mm -hmm. want to kind of start over again. And they're absolutely, you will mm -hmm. have access to the course for as long as we host it for at least a year from the time that you sign up. So mm -hmm. work it into your schedule. And how long yes. do you think each module takes to work through, Melissa? Are you talking just watching the videos or watching the videos and doing the homework? Well, watching the videos and doing the homework. I'm going to say between 30 minutes to maybe an hour. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe an hour and a half on one of the modules where we check all the numbers. And that's but, like just yeah. for that week. Like if you could, just for that week, you can fit that into like working a little bit at a time, like maybe mm -hmm. 15 minutes a day and you'd have no problem finishing the module. Oh yeah. With, oh with yeah. The and there's no homework to turn in. It's all self-checking. So exactly. you work at your, you work at your own pace. And we decided to do it that way on purpose because we know people have busy lives, things right. come up, you know, so you work at it at your own pace. And then we'll meet together for that live zoom where you can ask me all of your questions up right. to that point. Yes. So the other question that we keep getting to is, I can't do this now. It's summer mm -hmm. in the Northern Hemisphere. It's too busy. Are you going to offer this again in the future? Mm -hmm. and? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So for people like me, where I teach my own kids, summertime is like, whoo, okay, books are away. Now it's time for me yeah. to learn the things that I want to learn. But I understand not everybody has that lifestyle. And sometimes mm -hmm. summer is actually busier mm -hmm. because maybe you have kids at home Maybe you've picked up a summer job or something like that. So maybe fall is a better time for you. So we will definitely be offering this again in the fall. Uh, think when school starts up again. Right. Sometime around there. But yeah. So absolutely. Our goal is to offer this again. That's our hope. So while mm -hmm. things do happen, but definitely we're, our plan is for to mm -hmm. offer this again in the fall and on a regular basis. So you can mm -hmm. jump in when you need to. And when you're ready to make this step into crochet tech editing, we're here. Um, mm -hmm. And let's say you're not ready right now. And you're like, well, how can I get ready? How can I get ready? And I would say the first thing that you have to do to get ready is to work in your craft more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Read patterns. Yes. Um, pay attention. Get a little bit like if let's say you've always wanted to know more about toys, crocheting toys, and it's hot mm -hmm. right now. Um, those mm -hmm. are like the top books on Amazon. Yep. Then dive deep into what you know in the future you want to become an expert at and get there so that when you are ready to start your crochet tech editing journey, you're ready mm -hmm. to go. Um, yes. So that's where, what I would say. Um, and I think the last and most, probably one of the most important questions that we've gotten in the last couple of weeks is, it's not even a question, it's a statement. I can't afford this. It's just too expensive for me. And yeah. we want to acknowledge the fact that things are happening in world right now where the economic situation in some places um, is just not good. Mm -hmm. And we do acknowledge that and we know that. Um, and if this is something that you just can't afford, we completely understand. And you don't have to feel, you do not have to take a course to start tech editing. No, no. So this course, Melissa has explained this to me before, is kind of like a shortcut. So yes. let's say you don't have time and you don't have the, the financial resources to start. You just need to start. Mm -hmm. And we would just tell you, 
start. Mm -hmm. Find a way like to learn the things that you want to learn related to tech editing. Read everything you can online yes. and do it. This course is offered to you as an opportunity to make a shortcut to that end. Yes. Yeah, it took me four years to get from starting to tech edit to having my list completely honed where I just pick up a pattern, pick up my checklist, and we just go through it. So four years and a lot of trial and error, a lot of, oh, yeah, I should definitely be checking that on every pattern and not just assuming that it's there. But um, you totally do not have to take a tech editing course in order to tech edit. However, I would definitely recommend seeing if you can find like a checklist on uh, for designers mm -hmm. somewhere online and then maybe start practicing on patterns that you find for free. Just, you know, yourself. Yeah. Seeing what all, you know, you spot in things and brushing yeah. up on check numbers. Yeah, that sort make, of thing. Make sure that you join our free Facebook group and get into yes. the realm of where the editors are yes. talking about all the things. You can pick up a lot of information. Oh, um, yes. We're, read our blog posts, figure mm -hmm. out, like, get your head into how am I going to do this and do this well and make a plan mm -hmm. for yourself. If you guys have any more questions for us, throw them into the chat now. And I just have one more comment to make about this. If by chance you're on the fence about this, take into consideration that this is an investment in your future. So we've talked about the benefits of becoming a tech editor. It's incredibly satisfying. It's a fabulous, uh, flexible way to work from home or from anywhere you want to work. It is an excellent way to become a master at your craft. And it is a phenomenal way to just get into this industry and to make money at something that you perhaps love to do mm -hmm. as a personal pleasure or a hobby. Um, so also look at this cost of this course, not as a cost, but actually as an investment in your future. Um, I don't know how many jobs would you have had to work to, to make. So the course right now is, uh, it, it's offered for $347 if you pay everything up front. And then we have a payment plan option. How many jobs is that, Melissa? Well, I'm actually going to give you hours. Hours. So of right. you decide in today's market. It's the going rate is about twenty five to forty dollars. Mm -hmm. So why don't we per split hour. the difference yes. per hour? I'm sorry, per hour, not per job, per hour. So that's like your so, hourly rate that you would charge your clients. Um, that that includes your business expenses, so like your overhead and everything. Yes. So it's not what you take home. That's yeah. your hourly rate that you charge your clients for doing the work. Yes. Yeah, so we're looking at about if you charged about thirty five. Uh, 11 hours worth of work. 11 hours of tech editing work will recoup yep. your cost for this course. And yep. I would be, I think I was working more than 11 hours in a month within at least three months of after starting up my business. I think oh, yeah. by the time I was six months into my business, I think I was billing probably closer to 30 to 40 hours a month. Um, mm -hmm. maybe more. So in other words, it doesn't take very long no. to build up the client base to be able to recoup your costs for this course. So it is an investment that's worth it. Well, and it's, it's also an investment that you may be able to write off depending on your tax laws, where are you on, where you're at in the world here in my state, in the United States, I have a business license set up and wrote it off. Mm -hmm at the end of the year at tax time. So there's that, there's that too. <laughs> but yeah, 11 hours at today's rates. And yep. once your name gets out there as being a fantastic crochet tech editor, you'll, you'll be like me and you'll be looking for other colleagues to help with the workload. <laughs> yes. So, so I currently work with five editors. We all work on a team together on big projects. So this, this career is not just you sitting in front yeah. of your computer working for independent designers. There's all kinds of different ways to work as a tech editor oh, in yeah. the industry. Um, so 
we'd love to talk more about that and maybe in a future session that would be fun do you guys have any questions those of you still watching live we'd love if you have any questions please throw them into the chat now because we're just about wrapping up our live q a today and we want to make sure we answered everything um one more question let's see melissa can we ask questions of melissa after the course is over no no <laughs> Bye. No, I'm out. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm always here. <laughs> yes. I'm always here and you always are able to go into the course as long as it's being hosted. Yes. Like Sarah said, which will be at least for a year. Yes. But I have no plans of moving the course or changing anything. You always have access to the um the Q and A box where you send a message directly to me to ask me a, a question directly, or you can always throw questions in the individual modules in the comment section. So are, that's two ways, at least you can get a hold of me or just email me. Yes. If you need to. Email, yeah. chat with her. So here's the yeah. thing is the whole goal is we're, we don't want to do this alone. Again, I'm just going to reiterate this is we are here for you. Now we can answer any questions you have right this minute. And we're also here for you during the course while you're like, hey, I don't understand this, or could I do this differently? Or how do I do this? And then after the course, let's say four months down after the course, you get a client and you are stuck. You're like, I don't know how to handle this situation, or I don't know how to solve this problem in this pattern. I've never seen this particular stitch described this way. What is this? You go to the Facebook group that's just for the students of this course. You go yes. to the free Facebook group where we have almost 2,000 tech editors in the Tech Editor Hub, and you ask questions. So it isn't just that you have access to Melissa through this. Yes. You have access to our community, which is most important to us, is we are intent on building up this network of people who rely and help each other through the whole process with the goal we're going to make patterns better for the makers. How many times have you picked up a pattern, Melissa, and you get halfway through it and you go, this has not been tech edited. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually got mad one time because I bought a pattern and it was expensive. And I'm looking at this thing thinking, I should just mark this up and send it back to the designer. But I didn't because, you know, I hadn't been asked to do that. But but yeah, and let me let me tell you, on some of these social media sites, if you are a designer and your patterns have not been tech edited, they will talk about it and they will name names. <laughs> so, so having the best possible pattern that you can produce is vital for your reputation, for sure. And so that's why we do what we do. And that's why we got into tech editing is we are... Yeah enthusiastic about helping designers improve the product that they're selling and yep. for publishers and for magazines to do the same we want makers to be satisfied and that's the end goal um because we like to we like to sit down and work something without <laughs> coming into yes. problems in a pattern yes so all right i think that's everything for today did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about melissa I think we've covered it all, but I hope to see some of you guys in class soon or in the future. So you like are so said, inclined. Yeah, so um, Melissa's course, Learn to Tech Edit Crochet, is open for signups right now in the Tech Editor Hub. Go to the link in the chat for more information. It's open about 24 more hours, and then we'll close enrollment until fall. Um, we really appreciated you guys being here today. Oops, looks like we have, oh, <laughs> it says there's one big name here on company. Sharon says it has the worst patterns. They need a tech editor. And Sharon, maybe you can be that tech editor for them <laughs> to help improve their, their pattern. Oh, um, yes. We're, we um, would love to, we'll see you around in all the places again. Um, we're yes. super excited that you could join us here today. We hope to see you again soon. And feel free if you have any questions after this is over, if you'll ask a question down in the comments and we'll yes. be sure to answer it um, if you're watching this as a replay too. So we're here. And that's the call. Melissa, 
That's that's it's my cue. Warm. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been great. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.